Hey guys, so welcome back. So yes, things are getting a little bit more heated in the presidential race. Anchal Su looks like he is making moves on poaching some of the key figures from at least the party that most likely everybody's predicting like they're going to try to merge. Yes, there are public statements saying like, oh, we're not thinking of merging essentially the main conservative party with Yoon Seok Yeol and An Chol Su. They've completely denied it, but all the media people keep thinking and predicting because everyone's done the calculus. They've got to, they've got to merge and we've only have 40 days left. So it's a question right now. It's a battle of unification like well <laughs> it's kind of like you know north and south korea you know unification well, who's gonna be in charge and nobody wants to not be the one in charge yun suk yeol says like you know he's not going anywhere and he's seeing some of his poll numbers go up a bit but these polls are a little bit sketchy i would say and a lot of people question the validity first of all the sample size is kind of small only a thousand people and there is some sort of question of like how valid it is if you see that the poll doesn't show a lot of the undecideds. So if they're kind of skipping out on the undecideds, it looks like Yoon Seok Yeol is actually going up a lot and Lee Jae Myung is plateauing or going down and then An Chol Su actually in the past week has gone down a bit. But once you get these polls that actually have the undecideds in there, it's still anybody's game and An Chol Su is showing a lot of momentum. Regardless, he still has to make some strong moves and which I think he is by now almost landing. It's not confirmed, but there was like a closed door meeting between a guy that's basically like his chief of staff and Hong Jun Pyo. Now, remember I said like on the Lee Jae Myung side, the liberal side, how like the number two guy uh, in the primary was supposed to be the next president or at least the candidate from the liberals. And then Lee Jae Myung swooped in and, he, you know, he's like, what the heck happened? And he didn't like how the primary went. Similar thing happened on the conservative side. So like I said before, we have two outsiders as the main candidates of each of the establishment political parties right now. So Hong Jun Pyo was supposed to be like the next in line. Actually, in the primary, he got more of the votes apparently from the public vote, but I guess they might have some sort of like a delegate, like a super delegate type of system with the actual like regular voters, but he was able to pull in more actual real voters than Yoon Seok Yeol. And then he is the guy that is able to pull in that young male vote right now in Korea. And so he's seen as the dude that, even though he's like some old, you know, Ajushi man, can resonate with that younger crowd. So I think that those younger guys who feel disaffected sort of see him as like, well, that's what I should eventually have when I'm his age and he's gonna still give me that golden path of, you know, being like a Korean male misogynist or something uh, and have advantages maybe that are not necessarily earned, but just by birthright. Anyhow, so he is a big wig in the conservative party and he has not been a fan of Yoon. You can never really have like the dude that you kind of bashed in the primary and say like, hey, come aboard my campaign and, you know, help me out. There's a lot of foot dragging there and I don't think that he was satisfied with whatever Yoon was doing. You know, that whole civil war that happened at the end of the last year that carried over into January, Hong Jun Pyo was also part of that because he was dragging his heels on like helping the campaign. And it all came to a head last Friday. Hong Jun Pyo basically said on Friday that Yoon was thick faced and black hearted. 
Oh, yeah, he threw out, like, some metaphorical, lyrical kind of insults. And a few days before, it looked like Yoon and Hong had a closed-door dinner for, like, a heart-to-heart. Say, like, dude, you know, like, can we just, like, get along? Guess it didn't go well, because a few days afterwards, you know, Hong is out there saying, like, this thick-faced and black-hearted dude, uh... I can't work with and not only that Hong Jinpyo publicly and vehemently said that I want to be kicked out of the party I guess he didn't even want to say like I'm leaving he's just like kick me out kick me out so I guess he's basically making a challenge to the people within the party like you all you all choose and show me your loyalty or not you know i've been like the leader in this party because yeah he was like the party leader he was the he was also the former presidential nominee way back when in 2017 you know after the whole uh Pakane impeachment and so he is kind of like you know been the head honcho and suddenly like you know he's being sidelined those kind of guys don't like that kind of stuff and so now he is out for revenge this is a great grab for Anchar Su why now some people might say like oh no like if you eventually want to merge you want to have friendly relations no that's only if Anchar Su wants to be sidelined again if having friendly relations is basically gonna just benefit the establishment that'll just make them seem like more of the nice guys after they basically acquire you and like you know eat you up and have Yoon be the merged candidate and then take all of An's hard work and voters and everything that he uh, built up I think An is doing the right thing by trying to get yeah, one of the enemies right now in a house divided and then go back to that said house while it's burning down and say like, look, you want us to save this house because I got the Hong Junpyo fireman behind me and all of his other teammates will kind of scurry back in line. That's the benefit of it. It's kind of like a pre-packaged, like right now, you know, people in the party might be like oh well but you know we have to kind of get in line you know be loyal to the current political candidate they can easily say like oh well you know like if the new candidate is Ancho Su and oh yeah you know I've already had relationships built with Hong Jun Pyo oh yeah I'm gonna go over there because you know these people scurry like ants to wherever it's safest and so I think this is a very smart move for An Char Su, like if he can really formally land this. And so Hong Jun Pyo, I think, is going to need to feel a level of respect and a roadmap of what his role will be. Because again, he is going to be like the second fiddle when he expected to be like the prima donna. And you're going to have to really offer him exactly like something that would satisfy him perhaps like a roadmap to like he's going to be the next presidential candidate or under an An Chol Su presidency he would be like the leader of the political party of the newly established on administration or you know have some sort of like you know prime position uh, that would basically be like the shadow president essentially and so right now Hong is uh, appealing and his power base is sort of like as an influencer with the young crowd and he has worked on these initiatives for uh, working on building like economic feasibility for the young male demographic and housing for the young male demographic namely basically they need to get jobs in order to afford like a apartment so that they can get married and then have their nuclear family and so i think that would be good on the surface to give hong jun pyo that sort of a platform really rev that up give that to him and let him continue on to build that voter base so that that could be also his political power moving forward within the Anchor Su umbrella and the family that will also help deliver votes for his presidential campaign and then 
on the back end, behind the scenes, let him loose, Hong Jinpyo, let him loose to unleash whatever kind of revenge campaign he wants against the whole Yoon Suk Yeol crowd. Because apparently, Hong Jinpyo said like, look, you got to, if I come to your side and help you out, you're going to have to resolve your mother-in-law's corruption and your administrative incompetence. And I guess he was not able to resolve those things. Administrative incompetence, sure. Yoon suk Yeol probably has incompetence issues, but I read that as disrespect. If you do, did not make those uh, correct competence moves you probably pissed a lot of people off and then you didn't instead and in korea actually unfortunately instead of actually then fixing the problem with competence you actually have to fix the problem with apologies or gestures of respect you actually don't have to fix the problem you have to fix people's egos if you fix people's egos you actually don't even have to fix the problem and so he probably didn't feel like his ego was fixed and then also there must be something with the mother that really pisses him off and especially now that the court just reversed a lower court ruling that had found the mother guilty well now the mother is not found guilty but apparently that hasn't really even resolved the issue and i think that was the wrong move again by yoon suk yeol because yoon probably thought like okay if i can work my back channels and then have the court prove through some sort of like trickery in the courts again can't trust the courts here in korea trickery in the courts to prove that my mother-in-law was not guilty, then that would resolve Hong Junpyo's issue. No, Hong Junpyo probably wants to see your mom-in-law pay for her sins. That's what he probably meant by resolve. But in his mind, resolve is, and especially since his wife is probably saying like, hey, get my mom like freed and cleared. So he is like doing all the wrong things. Mr. Yoon, you're not doing the right thing, man. So one of you asked like, wasn't there another person that passed away connected to the whole Lee Jae Myung scandal? Yes, so that makes it four, but this fourth person, it's also a little bit shady, but there is a little bit of an out because apparently he had been diagnosed with cancer before, so it was a actual pre-existing condition, so that's why people are making less of a deal out of it, but it still seems a bit shady with its timing, so I just wanted to give that caveat there. But again, somebody else had passed away. However, there's another separate person also involved in the land scandal that then is now also been jailed again so more people are going to jail involved in this land scandal and that does not even touch upon a separate scandal that we'll also get to that deals with some sort of prepaid debit card that you know basically saves on sales taxes that also involved billions of dollars when he was the mayor of uh, the town that he was running uh, that was outside of Seoul so E. J. Myung again. He was just like, "Oh, you guys, please!" Like he, like when he he went to his his you know former town that he was the mayor of to get you know public sympathy, and and he kind of like did a show where he was crying, but people are saying crocodile tears and saying like, "Oh, can you guys like stop a uh, like." attacking me and intimidating me over these voice recording files but these voice recording files again show like what an abuser he is and then he got his whole entourage from his party to also bow on the floor and stick their butts up in the air over his own shame so this guy is just a relentless showman so there are also by elections happening at the same time as the presidential election so these are elected seats for the national assembly and probably local elections and hong jun pyo had asked yoon suk yeol to help campaign for some of the people in 
Hong Junpyo's key areas in Seoul and his hometown of Daegu. And these are like the conservative hotbed areas. But Yoon Seok Yeol said, well, he said yes, but he kept going over to Cheollado to try to get the liberal votes. And it's sort of a lost cause to go to those really heavily blue areas, but Yoon Seok Yeol kept going over there, kept going over there. And that also probably pissed off. Hong Junpyo. And so Hong Junpyo, at least on the surface, it does seem that that is probably one of the requests of his deal. Like, help me win the elections of my people that I need for my political power base. And if Yoon Seok Yeol, that, that was probably part of his his administrative competence that he failed on was not being able to help out in that part of the deal and you see An Chol Su going to the areas that Hong Jun Pyo likes. So it seems as if An Chol Su can kind of play the game perhaps a little bit better and rope in Hong Jun Pyo. But Hong Jun Pyo, we also need a little bit of commitment from you. We can't have you delay a little, you know, too long. We need an answer from you. And you need to get on board and show that you are really serious in delivering and working all the back channels and actually you making sure that this unification happens and that you really deliver it so that An Chol Su is the unified candidate under that situation. Otherwise, why are you going to be doing all this for you? Because An Chol Su is also taking a little bit of a risk of swinging a little bit too right wing with you because you are definitely really right wing and Anchor Su is more of a purple candidate. I mean, even though he's wearing that ugly shade of orange, that's also why I hope he can kind of merge earlier rather than later because that orange is so ugly. But he is more of a purple candidate. So he's kind of gotten, he's in the middle. Like, so people who like him are straddling both like the more progressive and then the more conservative side of the political spectrum. And he probably can peel a lot of the undecided voters. An Chol Su does have the ideas, he has the character, and he has that sort of vision for the country, but he doesn't have that whole kind of like political greasiness that, you know, Hong Jun Pyo, you, I mean, I hate to say it, but you greasier than like a fried shrimp, okay? Like at Red Lobster. You can provide all of that. And that is what he needs right now, that political establishment grease. And so, that is the commitment that An Chol Su needs to see from you right now, and you better bring it. Also, as a little bit of an update, we saw An Chol Su's daughter, An Sol Hee. Her name in English is Shirley, and she came from the United States over the weekend or end of last week to, I guess, help on the campaign. So it seems like it's getting real serious. They're thinking that probably that An Chol Su has a real shot at the presidency so they want to show that this could be the potential next first family and that this family is a lot less of a risk than the scandal ridden families that really represent what we got to choose from as the front runners in the main conservative and main liberal camps right now. And so she's a postdoc fellow at the University of California at San Diego in chemistry and biochemistry. She got her undergrad at UPenn. She got her PhD at Stanford University. So I don't know. I think she might make... Yoon Seok Yeol's wife a little bit jealous because I don't think she had to fake her resume. She got a lot of nice degrees there. And so she's one very, very smart daughter. And she's just, you know, been doing her research, doing her teaching, doing her work. And now she's come into the country, I guess, to help humanize her uh, father and help with the campaign and to, I guess be a united front and show a united family and and see, I guess, basically sacrifice a month and a half of her time 
uh, to show the country that her father is uh, campaign ready and presidential material for the country. We have to see it, though. We have to see it, Mr. An. You know, you got to see more than Hong Jin-pyo. You got to, you know, line up your team, you know, get your army in force because once you are going to go into negotiations with a, for a unified campaign with the main conservative party, you're going to have to show that basically the power has to move to you as the center and not over to Yoon. And... Got to keep going there. Got to keep going there. Maybe and also get somebody more to, you know, spruce up the marketing of your campaign pledges. And please don't ask for like the the people to help you. People are selfish. I saw the response from the crowd when you're just like, oh, please help us one more time to, you know, fix the country. Nobody wants to lift a finger. They're so lazy. They don't, they're selfish. They just want to know what you're going to do to help them. And they don't even want to do any work to figure out like from the way that you laid it out like a, a professor because I know you're a good teacher, you're a good professor, you're very smart. And even though you made it very clear with your presentation, they're too lazy for that. They want it in a social media format. So maybe you should hire somebody to do it that way to make it easy for them to just swipe through and see what you're going to give to them for free unfortunately that's how it's probably going to be one all right guys what do you think i think uh we are very we're in a very exciting part of the presidential campaign leave your thoughts comments below don't forget to like share and subscribe we'll see you again next time Bye bye